Manhunt, the story of the crystal clue that led to Manhunt. No crime has been committed yet. No murder has been done yet. No manhunt has begun yet. Hello, hey Richard Dyson speaking. That you, Tom? No. Oh, gosh. Well, who are you? What do you want? Calling me on my private phone. I want you. I am dead, Josh. Dead. And I want you. I can't breathe. I, I can't. Very clever, murderer. The sound of your voice fills your picture. And a voice doesn't leave a clue. Or does it? Who will find the clue? Who will start the manhunt? Manhunt and the crystal clue. All right, John Rad. Tell me exactly what happened, Mark. Well, there's nothing to tell, Mr. Morton. About 20 minutes ago, I came here to Mr. Doss's apartment with some work that he wanted me to bring him here. He, he was going to a the theater, he had told me, and he wouldn't be home till midnight. I found him like this, and I told him. Stop feeling hot. Any idea who might have done it, Johnny Boyd? No, I don't know, Mr. Morton. I better call me Sarge and tell him I'm in space for me. All right. But I, I still have no idea who did it. Of course, we were working on an important formula for the War Department, and there were threatening phone calls, but we never paid any attention to them. I wish we had. I'm going to trace this rotten murderer down if it's the last thing I do. It's a dark he was very close to you, wasn't he, As close as a man could be. He took me to school and gave me a chance in his firm to get everything from me. Hello, Bill. You never know what I say, huh? Eh? Another new one, he says. It's a murder, if that's what you mean, Drew. J. Richard Darcy, a millionaire. This is John Gordon, his assistant. He found the body and reported the murder. Johnny, this is Bruce Stevens from the police laboratory. And uh, Pat O'Connor, don't you know? And Pat O'Connor. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, is there anything in fact, Bill? Not a thing. Medical examiner was here, found the bullet wound. It's the time of death at 8 o'clock, and he's left. That's all. Huh? Are you not sure about the time? Yes. Maybe five minutes either way. Say, uh, you worked for Mr. Darcy Gordon? Yes, I did, I. I guess I more than worked for him. You see, he had practically adopted me. I don't want to appear too much like a detective for him. A question of the test is exactly in my line, but where were you at 8 o'clock? You don't have to worry about him. I've known Johnny for years, too. And he's got a clean proof alibi. Yes? What is it? What is it? Well, from 7.30 to a quarter of 10, my son Bill Jr. and John Gordon were visiting me down at police headquarters. <laughs> You know, Pat, as we've been checked in the room, I was asked for no more to the fact that we tried the removal of the body. No, what are you looking for? I just have a Scarsby watch dress at the entry. It's a two on the watch. It was broken and fell down. You can't find the other half or any other piece of it because it's red. Oh, well, I'll... Now, what did a watch dress have to do with a mirror? I don't know, Pat. Try it. I don't want to check it with a mirror so far. He told us Gordon went to school with young Bill at the state tech and was known for years. But Gordon said he's been heard Darcy's a state of school. Hmm. Well, it's a tough day. Yes, and he's good looking, too. I'll tell him to go and commit a murder just to please you, but he didn't commit this one. Darcy was shot at 8 o'clock. And Gordon was down at headquarters with Bill. So he didn't leave except maybe for a minute and three hours. Yes, I know. What about those foreigners that Gordon said threatened Darcy unless he turned over his formula to them? Well, I'll run up to the FBI in the morning and see if the files on them and the agents in this area. He's talking about that crazy inventor, Richard Martin. Oh, I'll see him too. Uh-oh. Gotcha. Hey, Pat, did the medical examiner tell Bill Morton that Darcy was shot at 8 o'clock? Hmm, I think so. At least he set the time of death at 8 o'clock, and he'll be a sub-boss. 
generator clock, but I wonder what time he shot. Blood it all around the room, that means only one thing. Plus, he was already dead when the bullet was fired into his head. And Mr. Martin, Richard Martin, the inventor? I'm Martin. Who are you? My name's Stephen. No, no, you. Go away. Uh, may I come in a minute, sir? I'd like to ask you some questions. No, no, any answers. Now, go away, young fella. Uh, Mr. Martin, you knew Jay Richard Darcy, I understand. Darcy? Uh -huh. Yes, I know him. I read in the paper this morning he's dead. I killed him, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Every night for the past ten years, I've killed Jay Richard Darcy. Only he was plain Joe Darcy when he stole my formula and disappeared. You killed him every night? Every night. Sometimes I'd strangle him, sometimes I'd poison him, and... Sometimes I'd hang him and watch him suffer. Well, did you by any chance happen to kill him last night? Yes, I did, young sir. I don't remember whether I killed Darcy last night or not. Oh, hello, Gordon. Sorry to get you down here, but there are several things I'm going to know. Oh, I don't mind coming, Mr. Stevens. I'll do anything I can to talk. Thanks. Now, first, did Mr. Darcy really steal the Richard Norton thing? Off the record? Yes. Darcy was Martin's partner when Martin discovered the formula. He did take it, but he set up a trust fund in the event of his death that would turn over a lot of money to Martin. Hmm? He never would give Martin any real money while he was alive because, well, you'd probably know Martin's mental condition. He couldn't have held on to it. Well, Martin would be a rich man if Darcy died, is not he? Hmm, did he know about the trust fund? Yes. Okay. Uh, just one more thing, Daddy. Just what are you making with the trust fund? Well, it's for the War Department, and I can't tell you. Orders, you know. Well, I... I'll call you if I need you. All right. Oh, and will you send this out to the Yes, sir. Hello, operator. Connect me with the medical agent. Yes, I will. Oh, hi, Pat. Okay, what? Yes, I want you to be quiet a minute. Oh, hello, Doc. Who's Stevens? Say, Doc, you did an autopsy on Darcy, didn't you? Yes. Good. Now, what did he die of, Doc? Oh, that's so. Oh. Well, this is all starting to make sense now. Thanks a lot, Doc. Bye. So now you know what Doc is all about. So what? So this. I also happen to know who killed him. You know how I know? I know because one half of a watch for a thing is missing. That's that safe sound in the cell downstairs. Yes. He's going to stop from here to China. Good to know we've got a murderer right where we can put our hands on him. Well, you've got that at early. Thanks for calling me down, Stevens. I wanted to be in this thing at the finish. How did you know we killed Darcy, do you? Well, first of all, we know that Darcy was killed at 8 o'clock. But shot sometime after that. Why shoot a man after he's dead? Perhaps it was the person who fired the shot didn't know Darcy was already dead. Can't be. Shot was fired, and the body was on the floor. Right. Putting the to mislead the police. Now, the medical examiner's report showed that Darcy had been gas at that. Poison gas at that. It's the poison gas your firm was making, wasn't it, Gordon? You can tell me now. Oh, yes, it was. From the original Richard Martin formula. But it's just a chance, Ralph. No one steals the formula and is murdered with it. Well, the gas killed Darcy, and then the murderer came back later to make sure of it. Shoot him, and then uh, after the He could have done that all at once. I know he couldn't. You see, when Darcy was gas, the murderer was nowhere in the room. Were, uh... He murdered Darcy and he wasn't in the room? You... You're overworked. No, I don't think so. How about the what? Sister? What kind of that hat? The murderer had obtained a little poisonous gas and enclosed it in some kind of a thin glass with him. That's very interesting. Yes, yeah, it's a very thing. Anyhow, he went to Darcy's apartment sometime during the afternoon of the murder and inserted the glass container in the telephone box between the hammer and the bell. Now, a phone call would cause the hammer to hit the glass and break it, unloosing the gas. That's what happened. That's how Darcy died with the murderer for some self safe miles away. Well, I just thought... Yeah, I know, I know, the watch. Did. Well, the killer came back to Darcy's apartment later, but not only to shoot him and air out the room, but also to remove the tiny fragments of glass from the gas container broken by the phone book. But he picked up one piece of glass for a minute. The one that had been on Darcy's wristwatch had been smashed when he fell. He was quickly missing as the first two he had. Later, when I learned about the poison gas on that set. How do you like that? The guy committed murder... We get a telephone. Yes, and darn near a perfect time, Dad. I still don't see how you need it. Mr. Martin needs it, please. You never said Martin, say, Darcy. All I said was I wanted him placed in custody for his own protection. 
Well, see, I had a hunch the killer would come for him next. You mean Martin's not the killer? Oh, hold it a minute there. This is what our case all down to. The murderer had to have a motive, that's first of all. Then he had to have access to three things. Which were? Which were the poison gas, the Darcy apartment, and Darcy's private telephone number. Because the call that killed Darcy came over that phone. Only one person could fill that entire picture. Because neither Martin nor any foreign agent could possibly get Darcy's private phone number. That's why the murderer had to be you, John Gordon. Look, he's smart, copper. Now you're going to be sorry. Yeah. Oh. Hey, plug him, Bill. It's not free to lock him up. It's an awful shock, Steve. I've been running for years. Been using me for an alibi. I knew a homicide detective. Hmm, you're so handsome, too. Wait a minute. Hello. Yes, speaking. Uh huh. Yes. 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 Okay. You better get rid of this John Gordon. Yes. Got work to do. Alice Jennison, the scandal columnist on the Globe, has just been found in quite a scandalous position herself. She's lying in the gutter on a side street in the slums, and he, her throat is cut from ear to ear.